Hi, I'm KB with Nerdifiles. How are you both? Good, KB. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So let me just say I adored this show and I love the dynamic between your characters. But let me start with you, Zainab. You know, Alicia really bosses up this season almost in every way. And I truly, truly love that for her. So um, my question really is, though, do you think she has a little bit of a moral dilemma about rising the corporate ranks of this wild company that is doing a lot of harm? And how does she balance that with literally needing just a livable wage? <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I feel like Alicia boss is up too, and I love it. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, she definitely, it, 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 it's, it's not just a moral dilemma because of what it is, right? Like we all know that there's, that there, that there is some level of like nastiness, um, for a big corporation to be a very successful corporation, right? The thing for Alicia, though, that, 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 that uh, is a force is that her friend, her very close friend, Nora, has an opposing opinion about what's happening. And that just causes a lot more pressure, you know, in terms of uh, Alicia making her decision. So, yeah, there's a moral dilemma. But let me just tell you something. And I speak from experience in my very real life. Getting, I mean, being poor gets old. <laughs> yes. Okay. <Truly. laughs> it gets <Yes>. old. <laughs> so truly. <laughs> you know what? I am not mad. But the one thing I was saying the whole time I was watching season two, like, okay, Alicia, don't get used as a pawn, though. You know, like exactly. just don't get used as a pawn. <laughs> exactly. Because then you start you start saying yes to something. And I think it's really interesting how Nora kind of with that opposing view in her mind. Her friend, who used to be kind of this irreverent, autonomous woman, is now losing some of that personality and coming to the defense of that corporation. So she's just kind of becoming like becoming a, an entity of the, an extension of the corporation itself, you know, which is like so challenging as like that, like because you're like, I'm benefiting. But then how do I not just become that? you know, that a spokesperson for this place, you know, like you start to lose, you can lose some of your personality if you're not careful. Ooh, yeah. I like that, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, now listen, Kevin, Luke, I adore Luke because Luke is dying to have true companionship. And while some people, you know, may say that he is a little bit self-centered, I actually think he has a pure heart in a lot of ways, but that doesn't always get translated properly. So what do you think, you know, is ideal partnership really looks like for Luke? And it really doesn't have to be romantic because I really just think that Luke wants companionship, you know, like it not even necessarily of the romantic variety. I just think that he needs it. Yeah, it's really weird. I think he has a very warped view of of companionship i think it's it's very and it's not it's it i, I agree that it like for instance <laughs> a perfect example is uh we have a dinner party uh there's a dinner party and it happens at uh at, at nathan and ingrid's and he decides to bring a, a keg and it's not a smart choice uh and it's not even a kind choice but if you look at it from luke's perspective his favorite thing that he wants to drink is beer and he loves beer, so he wants to give other people beer. So for him, it's a kind gesture, not rude at all. But like, it's absolutely very intrusive um, and, and rude. But uh, so it, it, is a, it is just a kind of a warped perspective. Also, he has this thing in which I feel like with Nathan in particular, that like it's whenever Nathan talks down about like himself, like is self-deprecating in any form, in front of him, it bothers him. Like he, he will immediately reproach him and be like, you, stop, like do you, do you, and remind him of who he believes him to be. So he needs these people to like, and it may, it may be like a PTSD thing where it's like he just doesn't want to like have the darkness encroach, that he needs Nathan to be on a pedestal and he needs Alicia to, to be like annoyed. <laughs> 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 with him and just it's like it's like a fly that needs to be swatted at to prove to itself that it exists or something it needs he needs her to be annoyed with him and to acknowledge that he exists so and that's companionship to him which is super weird 
Well, I hope we get to see him annoy her again, even more in, in season three. So thank you so much for chatting with Nerdophiles. Really appreciate it and love this season. Oh, great. Thank oh, you thanks, so much. Katie.